and a roll call um, for the fellow commissioners. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Jefferson, are you present? Present. Great. Commissioner Ho, are you present? Present. Great. Commissioner Gerardo, are you present? Present. Great. Um, so we do have quorum, and I, Alyssa Scafano, the president, is also here. Um, so the first order of business is, uh, do we have any neighborhood council representatives today? Scott, did it? Uh, there are none at the moment, but for those who are joining telephonically or by the YouTube live streaming, uh, uh, press star six to mute, unmute yourself and star nine to raise your hand. But there are none at, the most, at this moment. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, so we can move on to the next item, a public comment on non-agenda items germane to the business of the commission. Are there any? There are none. Great, thank you, Scott. So we'll move on to the next item, which is the approval of the minutes. So there's four meeting minutes. Uh, the first one is um, the regular commission meeting that took place on November 9th, 2022. Um, I'm gonna ask my fellow commissioners, do you have any questions or comments on these on the meeting notes? I'll take that as a no. So um, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Is there a second? Uh, do we have a second to approve second. them? Thank second. you, Commissioner Gallardo. So I'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Ho, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. And I, Commissioner Scafano, vote yes. So the meeting notes are approved. I will sign those and forward those back to you. So then there was a special meeting uh, that we had also on November 9th. And so um, I'm wondering if any of the fellow commissioners have any comments on those meeting notes. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Okay, I do a roll call vote. Commissioner Ho, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. I also vote yes, Commissioner Scafano. So the meeting notes are approved from the special meeting now. The next one is special meeting that we had on November 30th, year 2022. Is there a motion to approve or any questions? Motion no questions. Approve. Thank you, Commissioner Gerardo. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, Commissioner Ho, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Gerardo? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. And I also vote yes. So the meeting notes from September 30th have been approved. The final one is the regular meeting that was held on December 14th. Are there any questions or comments on that meeting? I'll take that as a no. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. So, uh, Commissioner Gallardo, how do you vote on the approval for the minutes? If I, I was not present, can I still vote yes if I've reviewed them? Oh, that's a good point. Yes, you can. Okay, yes. then yes. You can. I vote to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. And I also vote yes. So those meeting notes, uh, meeting minutes have been approved. So the next item of business, I just have to read this paragraph really quickly. These are the findings to continue teleconferencing meetings pursuant to AB 361. This is an action item, a uh, recommendation to approve the findings and determination in accordance with AB 361, section three E3, that while the state of emergency due to COVID, to, due to the COVID-19 pandemic as originally proclaimed by the governor on March 4th, 2020, remains active and or state or local officials have imposed or recommended measures to promote social distancing 
This legislative body has reconsidered the circumstances of the state of emergency and that the state of emergency continues to directly impact the ability of the members to meet safely in person <clears throat> and or state or local officials continue to impose or recommend measures to promote social distancing. So um, I think all the fellow commissioners know what this is involving. So do we have a motion to approve this item? Motion to approve. Thank Second. you, Commissioner Ho. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Commissioner Gallardo, how do you vote? Yes. Great. Commissioner Ho? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. And I also vote yes. So this item has been approved. So the next item, which we're always very excited to see public art projects, um, the project title is the LAPD K-9 Memorial Monument. And this is both for conceptual and final. And Pa Pescadero from the Department of Cultural Affairs will produce or will introduce the project. Uh, thank ahead. you, Pa. Good afternoon, Commission. Uh, my name is Pao Pescador, uh, and I work for I work within the Public Art Division um, for Cultural Affairs. And so I'm just going to give a little bit of a background on this project before I pass it out over to representatives from the LAPD, who will be um, who will be discussing the project. Um, so this project is the LAPD Canine Memorial Monument, which is slated to be installed at the Police Administrative Building. Um, 100 West um, First Street in Council District 14. Uh, the artist is Austin Wellish with a, with a budget of $85,000. Um, we, are, we are asking for today conceptual and final approval. Uh, just a quick background on the artist selection. Um, in 2016, an LAPD canine was honored by the American Humane Hero Dog Awards. Um, so her name was Ida. At the award show in Beverly Hills, the artist um, was there uh, with a canine handler from Colorado. LAPD canine personnel had a chance meeting with, with the artist at the award so ceremony and the idea for the canine memorial materialized. Um, the, the LAPD canine personnel sought approval to work on a canine memorial by the assistant chief uh, um, Garamala and chief Charlie Beck. So um, today I have as a representatives, um, we have two representatives, uh, Leslie Herrick, um, and who else would we, have? I do believe the artist is present as well. Yes, the artist is on the call as well as um, LAPD canine personnel, Sergeant Davis and retired Sergeant Steve Caravalli. And I'm gonna share a screen to, to have the presentation. Um, would I get, could I get access to share screen please? Thank you. So, um, I pass it on now to LAPD to introduce the project. Steve, do you want to take it? Oh, sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, um, I'm retired LAPD canine. I LAPD for 31 years, and for 23 of that, I worked in the canine unit. And I met um, our artist who's on the meeting, Austin Weichel, at the Hero Dog Awards event. And uh, he showed me, um, I had heard about some of his work, so I went online and uh, researched it a little bit. And um, it was absolutely phenomenal uh, what he's done with hero canines that were in police departments, fire departments, and uh, the military. And so he and I started uh, conversing about um, setting up a monument for the LAPD canines that have died in the line of duty. It's something that we have never really approached before. Um, my family also has a background in stonework, and they are a city approved uh, marble and granite company and they're very well uh, renowned in this regard. So I felt like I had people um, for both sides of this for the bronze and for the pedestal to be created. Um, Austin presented me with an idea. I took it to uh, Chief Grimala and uh, she in turn uh, with the police foundation, I believe Dana Katz is on the line, uh, raised the finances for this monument. And that was back in 2017, 2018. 
And we've been uh, kind of just patiently waiting for a landing zone for the monument, which I believe now has been settled, which is near Deaton Hall there in the plaza. And that's where the red X is. And, um, and we feel like we've come up with uh, quite a monument and quite a testament to these dogs that have uh, died in the line of duty. Um, we've been very fortunate, only four so far, which is an unbelievable uh, <laughs> accomplishment in this day and age um, with everything that these dogs and these handlers deal with on a nightly basis. So we're very proud of that record, and we're hoping that uh, we don't lose any more. We've had a very good run, but we've also been very, very lucky that that has not happened. And if it does happen, we'd like to have this monument in place to honor uh, not only that dog, but the dogs from the past that have been killed in the line of duty. Is there anything else you want me to touch on, Pam? Um, so I'm just going to show the images of, um, and do you mind state there, there's a there's a date that is slated for this, um, for the, for for the um, that th this will be brought forth. I believe it's May. It? We're hoping to incorporate it in the um, memorial ceremony in May of 2023 for the police department. Yes. So um, I'm just going to show the images that were provided to us. This is the, uh, this is the, this is the overhead location of, of where the work will be installed. Um, this is the, the pedestal that will be as stated um, where the, this, where the um, Kano Memorial will be installed on um, below with the names of each of the four um, the, um, canines that have passed. Um, LAPD has also provided the structural drawings that have been produced for this project. Um, this is an image of the bronze structure that will be on that will be installed on top. There's a couple of different images of it from a different ang view angles, including the height of the height of the work. Um, and then they also provided images of, of where the location of the memorial will be going um, on the campus. Um, so the individual standing in the in the screen, um, this is um, he represents where the memorial will be placed. And so you see where it is in in location to to City Hall across the street. Um, lastly, LAPD also provided um, letters the letters for approval um, as both the grant process as well as um, um, both administration that was included as part of this project. And this shows that the funds that were that were provided by the LAPD um, Foundation. And lastly, in terms of maintenance, that what was stated is uh, these are engineering drawings. Um, as it was stated, LAPD will maintain this project. Um, after its completion. Yes. I believe those are all I have in terms of documents that were provided. Um, so if there's any other things, if there isn't anything else that wants to be provided either by the artist or LAPD, then um, we can open it up to questions from the commission. We have nothing else to provide. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm go going to the image. Oh, so these are more documents. I'm just I'm just going back up. OK. Images, just so we can have a, a nice visual. Yeah. It looks great. Thank you. Thank you, Pa. I think um, I'll ask my fellow commissioners if they have any questions or comments. Uh, Commissioner Gerardo, do you have any questions? Can we go um, up back up to the base? Um, sure. Sorry, sorry. The 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 base on which the sculpture will sit. I think there there's um. It's like an architectural or engineering drawing. Yeah, architect, exactly. Oh, I would say. Is there any rendering of the base that we can see other than the architectural, the engineering drawings? No, just, just something that, I'm sorry, this is Steve Carnivali again, just what we've put on the Word document. 
And, and that's, that, um, go ahead, Leslie. That was the um, image that was up prior to coming back to the plans is kind of what the front face of the base will look like. So I guess, Yvonne, your question is, is that like a gray granite? What's yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Steve Carnavalli again. It's a Luna Pearl, so it is a gray uh, granite with the black specks. It's a Luna Pearl granite that will be uh, about an inch thick. Um, it, it, it's a little difficult. I, I, I really um the sculpture itself is is beautiful. It would be very helpful to see a rendering of the base with the dog on top of it to get the full image, um, as well as um, any locations. I see on the front that that's where the signage goes um, with that previous image. Um, but other than wanting to see a rendering of the base. Uh, I don't have any further comment. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Um, Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions, comments? Uh, no questions on the design. I just had one question on, I believe the, um, the making of the, the production of the, um, the sculpture. Did you say that your families producing it or that you you um, sought their counsel because of the the business you guys were in right so I so i thought there i'm sorry this is steve carnavalli again yeah, yeah i sought their counsel because this is something that they they do a lot of they've done Got works uh, uh getty museum the our lady of angels cathedral etc and uh so so there they produce this drawing for us got it but it's not your family that's being been commissioned to produce this yet uh, it is my family that has bid the job because they own oh. the Marble and Granite Company. Got it. It's an uncle, my uncle. Okay. I wasn't, um, I wanted to get clarification on that. Yes. Um, is, is that it, Commissioner Ho? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, Commissioner Jefferson, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, and I, I think it's three, so I'm going to follow up where Commissioner Ho was. Um, I had the same question, and so the, it really had more to do with when the when the project was bid out, was it bid out as a sole source, and have you guys cleared all those things that are associated with with the fact that a family member, that a, a entity associated is actually going to build this that is family related. That's all, just wanna make sure that's not an issue that pops up later on. That's question one. Everything went through the um, Los Angeles Police Memorial Foundation as far as the um, donation with the funds. And so our department was working with them and the foundation is the one that I think select or let us you know worked with the artist and then is working with the pedestal company okay so we just make the assumption that they have gone through the necessary things to make sure that any conflict of interest matters have been dealt with correct right thank you okay so question two is somewhat similar to where commissioner gallardo is i, I don't have anything i don't have any concerns with regards to the design of the dog can we go back to the first page I'm, tr I'm trying to uh, see if I think, and I don't know for sure, whether or not the what appears is going to be the writing on the monument is what we're seeing in this image, right? Yes. And the, and the badge image for the dog relative to the size of the monument. It is the closest I could come with what I was given from those plans of what the size approximately would be. Right. So right now it feels, uh, um, I don't want to say off kilter or undersized <laughs> or something compared to Now, Can we go back to the dog? The pretty big dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I figure this is a really big 
pedestal. Yes. And so what I couldn't tell, and is the pedestal going to have the blue line on the side of it? Yes. Okay. So what I couldn't tell, frankly, was whether the, the scope and scale of the plaque that's going to honor the dog and have the words and all of that other kind of stuff, how that, where it fits, where it's sized, et cetera, to the, to the uh, sculpture of the dog. So like, I, I'm, I'm cool with this, except that the plaque part of it and the monument base part of it seem out of whack. You'd like larger writing? No, I, I think, um, I, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Phillips. I'm the commanding officer of facilities management division. And so let me see if perhaps I can provide some clarification. Uh, it, this, this, the pedestal is 60 inches or uh, it's 60 inches tall. And then the, the, the front statue itself is another 31, 31 and a half inches tall all in all we're looking at close to about eight feet um you know from the bottom all the way to the top of of that um the very top of the the bronze statue and so uh, this this is going to be facing um the this portion that we're looking at here uh the the face of the dog would be facing out this way as as well and so that lettering, um, that lettering and the actual badge there that you see with the, with the dog's face, um, that's, is, that's gonna be about the size when you look at the fact that again, it's 60 inches tall. So it's, it's relatively the, the, the writing dedicated to LAPD canines that have made the ultimate sacrifice protecting others. That's relatively um, you know, good size writing there that you see in the middle. Okay, um, so, I'm not so, sure if that, yeah, the, that bear with me, clarifies Bear things. with me a minute. Let me see if I can be more articulate. Uh, right now, I think what I'm looking at is that the, on this granite that you've described, there will be a blue line, probably signif significant of the blue and police department. And then there's a plaque that's going to be set uh, on the monument base. It's not centered, it's to the right of the blue line and up at the top. The size of the badge, the image of the dog with a badge feels out of sync with the size of the monument given where you've chosen to place it. In other words, if you had just placed the whole thing dead center and the blue line had run through the top and through the bottom, it, I, I, it would feel proportionate. It feels disproportionate to me, but because I'm also not seeing what the actual lettering will look like, because you could decide you're doing it in script or some other, I, I have no idea what it's going to look like. So right now it looks like someone sat at their computer, put this in so I'd have the information that's gonna go on there. Not that they're showing me what it's going to look like. And I need my architectural friend to articulate that better than I do. Yes, so I think if you guys go back to the image that you have the engineering drawings that show the dog sitting on the pedestal. Okay, so. I think the question you're asking, Charmaine, is if you look at the front elevation. Mm -hmm. Cause this is, this, this is the back of the dog. When you see this plaque, it'll be, you're mm -hmm. looking at the back. Uh, there, uh, can I interrupt on that? I'm sorry. This drawing has this dog um, the wrong way. I have another drawing with me. If you want to focus on my camera, it shows the dog oriented differently. His face will actually be to the left. His nose will be to the left. But we're looking at his back. Yeah, it shouldn't be like right. that. That was a mistake on the original drawing. No, 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 no. What I mean is, are, do we intend to look at his back? No. Okay. So either way, he's looking at us. Correct. And the plaque is in front of him. Yes? Yes. Correct. 
and the monument that he's sitting on will be as wide as it's stopping at the at yeah, the it stops a few looks like a few inches Charmaine in front of, of his, his feet. of his of his tail Correct, okay yeah his so, tail I'm gonna to have to correct you on that. I, I apologize. This was the, originally this was the um, the pedestal by the marble company, and so the orientation of the dog is a little bit off. I have in my possession one that will actually show you um, a little bit more clear. His tail will actually drape over. I'm gonna call it side number three, which is to the viewer's right. Right. And then his front paw will actually touch the front of side number two, which is to our left. Okay, I got that. That's okay. Okay. The ceramic emblem. Correct. And if this is the writing that's going to be on there, not all the other writing that was on the other thing, is this the only writing this monument is dedicated to? No, no this, that was just uh, something that the draftsman for the stone company put on there to represent the front of the, the monument. And it was by no means meant to be a final. Um, okay. Rendering. So here's my bottom line issue. As I'm looking at it on this rendering, it it feels a little bit more proportionate, although I don't know exactly what the stone is that makes the blue line, but it feels proportionate. When I look at the other thing that you gave us with all the other writing on it, it looks like a piece of paper that has a small emblem of a dog on a badge. Mm -hmm. So the artistic side of this in terms of the plaque is what one seems to be missing and two feels out of alignment that and so I just I, I don't mean to this is not life shattering so it's just a matter of saying oh it's a piece of paper on a plaque that's what it looks like to me right now and you've done so you've got this wonderful dog statue and this wonderful piece of granite and now we need to just make sure it's all Proportionate. I understand why you didn't drop the dog center because people need to read it at eye level. And the blue line is sand uh, is sandblasted with blue lithochrome. So now Correct. I understand that. Thank you. That's my concern. I have one question. Is the face of the dog facing City Hall? Yes. Okay. And no, sorry, no, 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 it'll face no. PIB and the, the tails towards City Hall. Okay. So the dog there, in the picture on the front elevation would need to do a 180 degree turn. So the head is towards the blue line portion facing us as we mm -hmm. were standing here. I'm just wondering, it looks like there was a conscious choice that you just put the information on one side of the pedestal and not two. Cause... Well, uh, and I'll interrupt again. Uh, on side, uh, side number three is tail drapes over that side. Mm -hmm. And so the other spot, side two, is open for, you know, um, you know, if something wants to be placed on side two. And even side three would be, you know, something that at some point could be viewed if you walked around the back of the uh, monument. I'm just not, I'm not asking that you put more stuff on. I'm just curious because that you just chose one direction to put the, that that's intentional, correct? Correct. It makes, it makes sense once they turn the dog around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think the, I think the statue is beautiful. I, I think the base, I mean, I guess, we as commissioners love to see the material. I I know what the pearl granite looks like, but um, it's a lighter gray. But we like to also see that material in in the future because um, it's it's just good to see the material and the size of the lettering. I sort of agree, Charmaine. If it's if it's centered within the blue strip and the other end, it makes sense. So can you go back to that first image of the pedestal? Yeah. And that looks like it's centered, correct? It's just not centered on. It's once you put all the other writing on it, all of a sudden the dog 
face on the badge looks insignificant. It looks more significant in the other things. So the design of this plaque and its proportionality to the monument and the significance of the dog face on the badge and the words underneath it that say dedicated to feel really important and everything else is ancillary and yet they have an almost more prominent position. That's really, and forgive me because I can't believe I'm spending this much time having a conversation with regards to a monument to honor and important, the importance of the dogs, but that's kind of why I'm having it. It's like, it almost feels like an afterthought. So are you saying you'd like to see the center monument, the center badge be a little larger? Well, let me just add, if I give you what my last question was, you'll know what my answer to this is. I'm assuming that within the police department, either those who work with the canine units or however else have had a chance to see what the, mon what the, what the sculpture and the monument are gonna look like and that they are happy with it. Yes. Yeah. Is there any other LAPD people on here saying yes to this? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. You've heard uh, my expression, which is sort of like, let that dog and that badge have a little more prominence because it's to the John Q walking by, it helps them understand because what they're going to see first is the big statue of the dog on the monument. They're not, half of the people may not know, except the people in the police department. So there's something really important about that, that, that badge and what you're saying right up underneath it about it being dedicated that have, should have the most prominence on the, on the thing. Beyond that, you, you do not need to bring this back to me. I am happy to trust that you all have heard the comments and concerns and to move it forward. It's important that it's being done and I think that the sculpture of the dog is beautiful. And the fact that the tag, the tail will actually hang off of the monument really gives it a sense of life. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just had one more. I, I, I agree with everything Commissioner Jefferson just laid out. Um, if I can just make a recommendation at the end of the day, it's not going to hold up, I think, um, anything. But, um, you know, having the names of the canines who um, have passed just moved right under that sentence that explains what what it's all about and for whom I think would not only visually make um, uh, you know make it flow um, but also as people read it I think it would make more sense just a recommendation but I think the, yeah the culture is beautiful Commissioner Gerardo, I think that's a really good point. And I think it addresses what Commissioner yeah. Jefferson was saying. Like, you know, yeah, if I you could see it. Mm -hmm. little, 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 you know, if it only ever has only four name tags, we will all be so excited. Right. We can easily move those down. Yeah. So if they're in a column underneath dedicated to that. Yes. Yeah. Oh. You know, and then it's sort of like everything's centered and, you know, it, it, doesn't look like a masthead with the four. Yes, thank you. We'll Straight move those idea. down. Yeah. Okay, great. I mean, I think it's a wonderful project and it's going to be great and it's going to be really great to see this installed. So, and may then, I no, offer a, yeah, a motion yeah. to approve? Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Um, so we'll do a quick vote. Commissioner Ho. Do you yes. vote? Oh, well, first of all, I have to mention that this is, uh, I should re-mention that the project title is the LAPD K-9 Memorial Monument, and this is both for conceptual and final approval. So, Commissioner Ho, how do you vote? Yes. Great. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. And I also, Commissioner Scafano, vote yes. So, thank you very much, and we're looking forward to seeing this in May. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.
So the next item um, is another public art project. Um, it's the Oasis of Pacoma at the Roger Jessup Park Gate and Public Art Project. So this is, um, it's in the seventh district and uh, Tanaya Picasso from, from DCA will be presenting, or Tanya, is it Tanya or Tanaya? It's Tanya. Thank you, Tanya. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Tanya Picasso. I'm with the Public Art Division. Um, this project uh, is located in Council District 7, uh, 12467 Osborne Street in the neighborhood of Pacoima. The artist is James Nash, um, also doing business as Jane Nash Studio. The owner of the project would be the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs. We're looking at a project valuation of 62,762 and we're asking today only for conceptual approval. The project doesn't have a history coming before the Cultural Affairs Commission prior to today's meeting. So a little bit of background before I introduce the artist who's here and, and will give us a more in-depth um, overview about the artistic um, narrative. Um, the origins of this project go back to 2018. Um, and it was approved through the Arts Development Fee Expenditure Plan in fiscal year 2018-19 as part of the Arts Development Fee Program. Um, this artwork will be permanently cited at the entrance of the Roger Jessup Park Community Garden. Um, this is also a, col a collaboration between the Council Office, the Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Department of Recreation and Parks. The project is a response to um, to the, the council office's desire to beautify the neighborhood while providing a safe and accessible entry point to the Roger Jessup Park Community Garden. The garden itself is tucked away towards the rear park, the rear of the park past the parking lot, uh, past the parking lot from the Osborne Street entrance. Um, the four acre garden uh, features approximately 40 garden boxes and a communal hillside filled with fruit trees maintained by the LA Garden Council. The park, as you know, is operated by the Department of Recreation and Parks and is approximately 627,000 square feet that has picnic benches and a playground. So they're trying to make it much more inviting and much more highlight the, the gem that it is. The artist James Nash uh, was awarded the commission based on their, um, their expertise and their ability to respond to the open call by providing a site-specific gate that had sign elements of the local neighborhood and environment. Um, more details of that will be given um, momentarily. As I mentioned, Department of Rec and Parks is a partner and uh, the project will be going before their task force and board for approval upon receiving Cultural Affairs Commission conceptual approval. The funding, uh, the funding originates from the Arts Development Fee Trust Fund and includes all, all costs related to the production and installation of the artwork for a total of 62,762 for the artistically designed gate. There are additional funds that are um, and resources being allocated to the project that are coming outside of uh, the Arts Development Fee through the Council Office's Quimby funds. The project did go before a competitive, uh, a competitive uh, open process, open bid process. The request for proposals was issued in 2021, and the artists were required to demonstrate their professional cap capacity to oversee this project, including all aspects such as design, fabrication, and installation. Um, we had the open call open for six weeks. Um, it was distributed through our DCA's various uh, social media platforms, as well as the council office's newsletter, and we received a total of 33 applications. The department convened a five-person five professional peer panel and, um, and arrived at, uh, at James Nash due to the strength of his proposal and professional expertise. Um, as, in terms of the meetings, I mentioned the project will be going before Rec and Parks Advisory Board and uh, and their commission for approval. And right after that, there will be another community meeting where the artists will get more input um, from the community regarding the design to finalize the design elements. The Department of Cultural Affairs will um, be the agency responsible for the maintenance of the artwork of the gate, but we will be working in collaboration with um, the city family to maintain the overall site, specifically Reckon Parts. 
um, we are seeking conceptual approval. And so with that general background, I'd like to pass it to James Nash to share their screen and provide more information about themselves and the project's artistic intent. Hi there. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Thanks, James. Hi. Hi. Thank you. My name is, thank you, Tanya. Uh, my name is James Nash, and I'm a Los Angeles-based artist, designer, and craftsman who works primarily in metal. I'm going to start with a quick introduction to my practice and some of the processes involved in my work, and then I'll talk about the design and proposal. I've lived in Northeast LA for most of my life, in particular Highland Park and Lincoln Heights. I've worked with metal for almost 20 years. I apprenticed for an artist and metal worker for eight years, and I've had my own independent practice for about 11 years. I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, great. Um, since 2015, I've completed a number of public art commissions, mostly for parks in Southern California. I've worked with LA Rec and Parks, the City of Whittier, the Trust for Public Land, and the Los Angeles Neighborhood Land Trust. I've also worked for the Audubon Society at Debs Park, Descanso Gardens, the Natural History Museum, and the Arlington Garden in Pasadena. This is a studio shot of the entrance to York Park and Holland Park. Um, and then this is how it looks installed. Um, I design and build everything uh, myself out of my studio in Lincoln Heights. In my work, I use a variety of materials and te techniques. Most of my work is made out of bent and forged metal, a, metal, a process that is incredibly labor intensive, but visually rewarding. The metal is often heated up until it is red hot and then hammered, shaped, and folded to create dimensionality, texture, and an organic feel. I also employ casting, which adds rich three-dimensional details to a project. I make forms in clay and then make a mold and then pour wax into the mold. The wax is then taken to a foundry where the objects are poured in steel, stainless steel, or bronze. It is a long, labor-intensive, and expensive process, but adds tremendous value to a project. It is important to note that my work is sculptural and three-dimensional. Unlike work that is cut out of a, a cut out of plate by a computer guided machine, my work is handmade and has a tactile quality that is impossible to achieve with flat plate. Due to its sculptural nature, my work changes as you approach it from different angles and distances. My work is also botanically accurate and directly inspired by nature. All of this encourages engagement with the work as people are drawn into the lifelike details in three-dimensional forms. My work is almost exclusively based on nature and depictions of the natural environment. My installations are very site-specific and I utilize the existing landscape or location to highlight formal and conceptual themes. While my work often explores botanical and organic forms, the plants and depictions of nature in my pieces are often tied to a specific location, history, or imagined future. The work can be decorative and playful, but it also contains important narratives, encourages dialogue, and can serve as an educational device. Most importantly, my work can be a valuable tool in placemaking, creating work that not only reflects a community or location, but helps foster community identity and a long-term sense of place. I believe that a majestic entrance to the community garden at Roger Yessa Park will achieve all of these things. So this is the proposal um, for the park. It's called the Oasis of Pacoima, and it is a celebration of a very large and popular community garden and its surrounding area. The design depicts a large pomegranate tree, a symbol of life and abundance. The pomegranate fruit and seeds fall to the ground, epitomizing the cycle of life and the power of gardening, nature, and community. The composition reflects the pathway through the garden that one takes to reach the orchard above, a tucked away oasis above the city. This is a close up. The design also shows garden plots disappearing into the horizon, as well as hills and mountains that echo the existing landscape. The scene also contains depictions of a number of different vegetables and plants found in the garden, pomegranate trees, corn, squash, cactus, aloe, and sunflowers. I've also included representations of butterflies, dragonflies, and birds. 
The gate will be made out of a combination of forged steel and cast steel. Depending on feedback, I may use patina or paint to highlight certain plants and animals. And so here are some photos from the community garden itself and how some of these things might look in metal. This is squash, cacti and the hills above the garden, sunflowers, corn, pomegranates, and butterflies. This is where the gate will sit and is drawn to scale to give you a rough idea. Um, it's about 10 to 11 feet tall. And the main gate, the, the main entrance is 12 feet. And then the two side panels are about six feet. And they tapered down from 10 feet down to eight feet. So overall, it's about 24 feet, depending on the posts and hinges and things like that. Um, the design is directly influenced by the location and the landscape, and I hope that people using the garden will appreciate the botanical accuracy and joyful representation of their space. After many visits to the site, I believe this design captures the essence of the garden and will encourage engagement and interest in the space. The gate will be bold and visible from the bottom of the parking lot, and I suspect it will draw more people into the garden. I think the design has universal appeal. People of all walks of life, of all age groups will appreciate the design and craftsmanship. I believe the gate will be an important landmark um, for the city of Pacoima and for the park. Thank you so much. Thank you, James. Does that conclude your presentation? It does. Great. Um, I'm gonna ask my fellow commissioners if they have any questions or comments. Uh, Commissioner Gallardo, do you have any questions? It's a beautiful work, um, really lovely. Uh, what what direction do the gates will the gates open uh, for you know forward or inward uh, to the park? They'll open forward. Um, apparently, the gate will be locked most of the time. It'll only be open for maintenance vehicles. Oh, an, okay. So it's not a public entrance. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, I, and, and sorry, Commissioner Gayard, but let me, if I just may interject, um, at this time, it's not open fully, but there are um, plans from the council um, member to make this space much more um, activated and welcoming. So it, it, the question is a good question of, you know, whether the gates are going to be closed all the time or open. Um, but um, there, there is um, additional energy being put behind it to, you know, bring programming to the space so that it can, you know, become more utilized by not only the, the gardeners, but the entire local community. Yes, because I, I think the gate is going to attract Absolutely. a lot of, of the public and um so yeah, I'll look forward to hearing um, how that evolves. But other than that, um, it's beautiful work, beautiful materials, um, and reflects the the community and the landscape that it's in. So thank you. Thank no you. Uh, comments. Thank you, Commissioner Gerardo. Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions or comments? No questions. It's just beautifully done um, and thought out. I love all the details behind why certain things were picked. So. Yeah, I just think it looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Jefferson, do you have any questions or comments? Ditto. I think it's gorgeous, and I hope no one puts one ounce of graffiti or other kind of paint on it. It's just beautiful. It's, it, it actually draws you in, um, and it's lovely to look at. So what a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, and I wanted to commend you, James, because I think it's really beautiful. I love sort of the abstraction and the kind of juxtaposed next to the realistic three-dimensional with pomegranates. And I guess my only question was very similar to Commissioner Gallardo's is that if the gate opens and, you know, are you going to be putting the three dimensions on both sides of the gate or is it more preference to one side? Yeah. I mean, at the moment, 
there's a little bit of a bias to the front, but because a lot of the stuff is three dimensional, it will have weight from all sides. All right. So if it opens, if it's actually used as a gate, then you'll see it from the other side. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Yeah, no, I think it's beautiful and I love the representation. Thank you. And I had one more uh, comment. Uh, I, I was, uh, when I first saw the other ones that you had done, and I thought to myself, oh, there, you know, there's going to be a safety issue because someone can stick themselves on it. And then I thought about the kind of fencing we put around places and they've got bob wire and all kinds of things <laughs> that people are supposed to be stuck. And I thought to myself, wow, if we did more of this, you get the same thing you want from some of those kinds of fencing, but boy, wouldn't it be so much better to look at. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to, to point out that I had a bit of schizophrenia in my head for about two seconds and then. <laughs> It served two purposes, so thank you. Thanks. Mm, that's wonderful. So on that note, uh, do we have a motion to approve um, the Oasis of Pacoma, the Roger Jessup Park Gate Public Art Project for conceptual approval? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. So we'll do a quick vote, Commissioner Gardo. How do you vote? I vote yes. Great. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. Thank you. And I also vote you. yes, Commissioner Scafano. So thank you. We're very, we're looking forward to the seeing the final. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so See much. See you next time. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to our next item, it's architectural submissions. Um, and we have two AGFs. Uh, the first one is, a, is LAX Pershing. Um, and this is both, this is for conceptual and final. And Tammy, I think you're going to be presenting this, correct? Um, yeah, I'll make it an introduction to uh, the project and then the applicant will present. So LA Pershing is a renovated monopole and it is designed by Qualtech uh, Wireless. Uh, Angela Mum from Qualtech is here today to present the project. Uh, Angela, can you please uh, unmute yourself and share your screen? Uh, this is Marcy Hart. I'm, I'm gonna be speaking up for um, Angela today. I'm more familiar with the project. Okay, uh, Marcy, go ahead and share your screen. Uh, oh, what did you want me to share? You're catching me. I'm sorry. This Marcy, is I'm sorry, Marcy. This is Angela Mummy. I can share my screen. Okay. Thank and you. And Marcy will talk. Thank you. All right. So, you know, after seeing all these beautiful submissions before us, <laughs> you know, I feel like we have the ugly duckling here. Uh, we have uh, an existing 45 foot steel monopole in the public right of way. Right now it has two existing panel antennas on it. And Verizon wants to uh, upgrade the technology on the pole by adding two additional antennas. So uh, what we're proposing is to move the existing panels that are at the top, we're gonna move those down, add two new panels to the top with shrouds and then uh, one other piece of equipment, it's called a recap and it's like a spark arrester, you know, if it ever gets hit by lightning or anything. So it's a surge protector. We're not doing any undergrounding or any changes any, any place else, not changing out the cabinet, meter location. We're just adding a couple of panel antennas to the top. And Marcy, can you just state where this is located? Uh, I know there's an image of LAX there, but. Um, Angela, can you help me out? I, I know I have it open here someplace. Uh, the address, it's at the intersection of uh, Pershing Drive and World Way mm -hmm. West. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay. Thanks for clarification. Okay, I will ask my fellow commissioners if they have any questions or comments. Commissioner Jefferson? No. Okay, Commissioner Ho? 
Sorry, I'm just trying to understand context here. What's around it? I'm not. Um, thank you for giving the the cross streets, um, but I'm not understanding what else is around it. If there's anything nearby, I just need more context. It's Marcy uh, or it's Andy. Just, you see the little picture there on the left? It's showing that it's kind of like on an off ramp there, tucked in the island. There's really no buildings around. The airport is nearby. Is there any other um, similar structure around there? There's uh, the taller street lights that are out in the area. That's why we picked the steel uh, uh, trim light. I can't even talk. Uh, the um, metal pole, the monopole style mm -hmm. to kind of fit in. So, Did Marcy, I let, let me ask you just maybe to clarify Okay. Commissioner Ho's question. When you're looking at the plan there and you see the little plane, that is on the western end of the airport, correct? Yes. And then the street there goes up against that berm. And then on the other side of that berm, it goes down to the ocean, correct? Ah. Uh, Big picture? I don't, you know. There's no, there are no. There's no There's residential no out there. It's the runway yeah. and the airport out in that. And the only other things that are out there are like airplane hangars, like you see. Right. In, right. In the, in You're the throwing thing. me off with the uh, the ocean. Oh, yeah. The ocean <laughs> is right there. So, you know, so I, the, when I'm working, I don't get to make those stops. You know, I'm right. it's like drive from one site to the next. So, yes, you're correct. The ocean is to the west. So there's no residential units. There's right. this is pretty much industrial, correct? Right, right. Industrial airport. Um, Commissioner Ho, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you for that. What is it possible that, that your question was also wondering whether how many more poles there were out there? <laughs> yes, I, yes, that too. <laughs> like I just need more information than what's been provided. Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Oh, so you mean other cell sites? That's right. Right. I I wasn't looking for other cell sites when I was out there, but I did notice that there weren't any other visually from the location that I was at. Can you confirm that? Or is this just what you, yeah, is that confirmed? Well, um, let me this take one a this it, this one already exists, correct? Yeah, this is an existing poll, yeah. correct? Right. So we're adding two new boxes and taking the top two boxes and moving them down. Correct. So look, I'm looking at, at Google Earth right now. And I'm going down. Um, what is this street? It's not telling me. So I'm not seeing another cell site. I can see probably about. 800 feet, 1,000 feet to the east. I'm not seeing another tower. You know, it's difficult uh, being so close to the airport to get all the approvals and everything. I think we were fortunate in this location because there is uh, an existing, uh, I think it's like a 70-foot uh, lighting with multiple lights on it that's in the same island that we share. So it's taller than we are. If I, if I get, chime into what I think, so Commissioner Ho, what I think you're thinking, which is always comes to my mind too, is at what point, how many more poles are we going to get uh, in, in the area? And I'm assuming that the same ordinances that restrict the certain number of poles when we see other things will exist in this area, they just haven't arrived yet. Um, uh, and so this one's here and they're lucky. Uh, I, I think my next question would be though, does this mean that when we get to the next level of upgrades and the next level of upgrades, this same pole can be used to add more panels? Um, generally, instead of adding more, this is, this is the exception. You know, the technology is changing and we have a lot of sites out there that have 4G, some still have 3G. So we're removing the 3G. It's being, they call it sunsetting, um, the, the 3G, and we're adding the new technology. And that's what's happening at this poll. It already has the 4G 
Those were the panels that were at the top. Now we're adding the 5G and LTE that everybody wants on their phones. And you'll notice the antennas for the new technology are smaller than the existing panels. So it could be that the good news is that as the technology continues, we won't get more poles. We'll just get replacements on existing poles if we're lucky. Well, that's the dream. Yeah, <laughs> that are smaller, hopefully. That will get smaller and smaller, yes. Uh, uh, Commissioner Gierdo, do you have a question or comment? Just the the images. Um, why are why are there these orange? Like I know I see it. There's construction or something happening. Is that current or is it that was from when I was out there? Time? Yes, they were doing some tunneling under the off ramp when I was out there. But oh. that's a project unrelated to us. Thank you. That that was my question. Um, no further comment. Thank you. And that off ramp is is internal to the airport, correct? It's, uh, it's not a public off ramp. No, it's a public. That's a public street. Oh, it's a there. street. Yeah. Okay. The part of the airport that most of us don't usually go through because it's kind of like in between. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there's runways on either side of it. Side and of it. Yeah, and the right. airplanes go over it at some point, and you don't realize that that's what's happening. Right. Okay, well, I don't have any questions or comments. Um, is there a motion to approve for conceptual and final? For LA Pershing, LAX Pershing? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Gerardo. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. So I'll do a quick vote. Commissioner Ho, how do you vote? Okay, yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Yes. Commissioner Gerardo. Yes. And I vote yes, Commissioner Scrofano. So um, thank you. Your item has been approved. Thank you, Commissioners. Yeah. So now we'll move on to the next item, which is replacement pedestal um, in Playa del Rey. And this is both for conceptual and final. And Tammy, I think you're going to present the project. Right. Correct. Yeah, this is um, a replacement uh, pedestal. Uh, it's going to be, uh, this one is named LA-02306A in Playa del Rey. Uh, we have Colt Waterbury here uh, to present the project for conceptual and final approval. Colt, can you please unmute yourself and share your screen? Yes, good afternoon, commissioners. Let me share screen. I hope you guys are able to hear me a little bit better than last month. I know we had some issues with the... No, you sound great. Okay, great. And you guys are able to see my screen. Okay, so uh, this site is for T-Mobile. It's on the east side of Pershing Drive, uh, north of Manitoba Street. Similar to the last project that was presented, it's just T-Mobile with, uh, with the upgrades of technology and everything. T-Mobile is looking to remove this existing cabinet and replace it with these uh, new and improved cabinets. Um, it is two instead of one, but it's similar in size. These ones are going to have um, just a little bit taller, but the width is not much different. Um, they're also gonna be placing this H-frame with some radios for the equipment needed for the upgraded um, technology. I think that's all the information that I had. If you guys had any questions. Um, well, Mr. Jefferson, or who, who would like to speak first? I'm fine with it. Thank you. Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions? Yeah, it sounds like you guys, you brought this to committee last time and I don't think I was here. So I have my questions may be redundant and that you may have addressed it, but same question I had for the previous presenter. Um, I need some context behind this. Um, you know, it looks like an apartment building behind me or behind the box. I just want to understand what the neighborhood looks like. Um, also, it looks like there are these additional boxes that extends the length of what was there or what is currently there. These um, 
you said there were like these it's to the right yes these yeah, here what, yeah what is that and those are it, sorry let me finish my question mm -hmm. um and does that extend the length the reach of um it, actual... it, yeah it will be a little bit extended just because the age frame and those are the radios that are um the equipment that that runs the the site um can do you have like a, a different view of that because yes, i have I'm, you okay. can see it here with the radios hmm sorry it's hard for me to visualize what this is it just looks like some grills um that's exposed where are the why are these wires that are exposed like how and the radios are contained in these boxes or, i mean i'm not it's hard it's really difficult for me to visualize this yeah so to be honest i'm not exactly too familiar with the equipment but it is it is the radios um like it's kind of like a shroud, I guess you could say that's over them, that over the equipment. Mm, did we talk, did you guys talk, did you present this last time? It was actually the commissioners to, to see, because I, I just don't, I still don't know what this looks like. Last month, the one that I presented, it was the same exact equipment. Uh, the only difference was location and because of the location, uh, but it was same, same radios and same cabinets that we were proposing. Yeah. Really? You mean, I, I, I appreciate your asking this question, Commissioner Ho. Um, can you go back to the other picture for a second? Yes. So from this angle, the little small side boxes don't look like they're that... Um, uh, that they're sticking out as far and they don't look as separate. When you turn it to the side, and I do not remember the side picture at all, but now I'll go back to the other one. Yeah, when you go to that, that doesn't look like an AGF box. That looks like we attached a whole bunch of stuff to some AGF boxes. Yeah, do you have a close up of that? I'm sorry. It's just so hard for me to. All I could do is zoom into this. Oh, sorry. I yeah, could I zoom into this one here, but I don't have any other pictures. So this is actually on the side of the cabinet. It is. It's an H frame that they place, and then they place these radios on the H frame. And what are those wires? Like they're just exposed like that? Um, in this photo, yes, I can. I could see if there's any way they can. Uh, actually, my my project manager is on as well, and he is saying that they will not be exposed uh, during construction. So, why would you present something that's exposed and not represent it to the the? You know, I mean, if it's not going to be exposed, why wouldn't you just present it so that it's not exposed? Which yeah. makes me question: Why is it presented as exposed? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? I, like I understand. I can yeah, I can have I, these photo sims um, adjusted, but during construction they won't be exposed. Well, then okay. I, I'm wait. I'm right there with you. Yeah, we didn't see yeah. this. We've never seen no, a box. Didn't see this. Yeah, that looked like this. You just presented us an AGF and a presentation for an AGF box and how it will be utilized that looks like this. That would make me say no. Hi, this is Peter Castaneda. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, and uh, the cabling that's gonna be there on site, what, what it does is we house it along those, um, you see how there's an atrium that has those going horizontally? So what we do is we pretty much tie a lot of that, what's it's called coax, the cabling. We tie it along the actual things that go across so that they wouldn't be hanging like that. They would pretty much be going perfectly wrapped around the, the bars that are going from left to right. That's the way we would be putting the cabling for these. No, that, that the problem here is we have never been, or if we have, and I almost failed to notice it, so thank you, Commissioner Ho. We have never been presented with an AGF box that had any kind of outside grid around it. 
Forget the wires. I, I can buy into the idea that nobody will see the wires. We've never seen an AGF with an outside grid around it. Everything was contained inside the AGF box. So this is a whole new design structure. And I don't recall ever seeing anything like this before. But I would not say yes to this. And Commissioner Gerardo, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I, I same comment. I've never, we've never seen, I wasn't at last month's meeting, but in the history that I've been here, I've never seen any type of um, external kind of attachment like this that has to do with the wiring or the function of the boxes. So um, I imagine we want to recommend that we show um, these folks uh, some comparable um, uh, pedestals that have been approved so that they can modify and bring them back to us. Got it. And just, you know, the other one, we did show something um, just like this, almost the exact same thing. Um, so. Then consider yourself having gotten away with murder. Um, <laughs> and, and, and go back to the very first picture. Okay. Please, sorry. What, you, what I'm looking at right there just looks like two boxes that happen to be um, on the side of it, pinned to the side of it. I can't see from where I am because I actually, the met, what I now understand is a metal pipe, I thought was the tree. Uh, right. Yes, and just, you know, and it's a box where what one side of it's thinner and then the other side, it's almost like a book, right? They're basically like uh, books. So that's why on the side here, it's gonna look very thin. And then on right. the other side, you're gonna see the actual platform, the, the face of it. You know, Neil, you're absolutely right. And so when you blow it up the way you've just blown it up, cause I can't blow it up on my screen. I have to have you all do it. And I see what it is that you presented. We, I would have, and please, and I will say this for myself personally, if I failed to see this at the last time you presented um, something to us that looked exactly like this, that's my eyeballs and this screen and a clear indication of the fault of the system of how we're using Zoom and we don't have the thing in front of us. Because I would not have said yes to this, so you consider yourself gotten away with murder. I thought that was part of the tree and the background except for the two boxes on the side. And I just thought that they were, I, I don't know what I thought, but when I see what it looks like from the other side, forgetting the wires, the design and, and what it looks like from the back, the design answer is no. Is there anything you would suggest that we can do to be able to propose something such as this? I'm wondering, can those be attached to the back? So they're not mounted on the side. So they're not, I think, did you, you presented to us two narrower AGF boxes in replacement of one, I think. I don't think. Yeah, it was the it. same exact cabinets. The only difference is the ones that we did last month where we did a green to blend in with the, um, it, it was surrounded by like trees. But the, did so. it have those two boxes to the left? Yeah, they, little... they had the same radios and the same cabinets. Right. Now, the other one was a more discrete location. There was trees um, pretty much blocking most of it. It was inside some grass. It was only a tree, and they're really not in front of, like, an a, apartments, et cetera. And also, we were painting the actual cabinets green as well. So, in reality, the other ones, you're probably not even going to see them. My question to your team is, if we find a way to maybe put those two on the back, because we are putting radials on the back already as well on these. There are already radios in the back, but if we find a way to put everything on the back, is that something that would be acceptable to your team? Um, so I, I don't have an answer for that, but here's my concern, is mm -hmm. that you're actually taking up more space, more street space with this new proposal than you did prior. Now, I don't know what the regulations and the rules are behind that, but you back out of this. My biggest concern, besides like you guys not representing your proposal 
to um to a degree that we're supposed to review it like because you're saying like you're presenting something but it's not what it is and i just yeah. so i'm just going to take your word for it but now you're intruding into more public space to me um can you can you zoom up zoom out please of this image and go to the side view um so you're taking up more public space i'm concerned about I don't know, it, it seems like a residential, not residential, seems like a big street. But let's say the as it's existing now, technically if the sidewalk's busy and what whatnot, you got you have space for somebody to walk behind there. What happens if like that same situation is the case and you have all this stuff in the back? Um, that's my concern. If you're replacing things, fine, it's existing already, but you're replacing and taking up more space. Um, that's what I'm not comfortable with, besides the fact that you didn't present what you you intended to present. So um, that's my concern. And I, I just wanted to respond to the proposal if we moved everything to the back. Um, I feel, not feel, I believe it needs to be enclosed either within the existing um panels or as like an addition kind of you know enclosure at the back um doesn't seem it seems exposed in a way that it should not be for public purposes um i'm assuming tammy that there's clearances for um, not that this is our, but just a question. I am. I assume that you all um, clear ADA requirements, um, yes. sidewalks, and everything. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, that would be my comment. Is uh, two two comments. One is we need it to to. Um, I would like it to be enclosed if it's to be moved to the back, um, and we'd like to see an accurate. Uh, another rendering um, of it before we can, before I can vote either way. That's all. Okay, so. Can I well, add two cents into this? Sure. And this, just so that uh, the presenters are, are aware, generally speaking, our commission has been more inclined to want to see less of these things popping up all over the sidewalk rather than more. And every time one of them is presented with a slightly different variation on a theme, the conversation has to do with how many of them are in the space, how many, uh, you know, is this getting bigger, is it getting larger, um, et cetera. This is such a new approach to anything that we have ever been presented with, that if we were consistent with our previous conversations, we would be saying no, because it's going in exactly the opposite direction of where we have been saying these need to go, which they need to be only so many and, and clean as possible in design recognizing the context of the location, et cetera. So I like the slim two things because even though they're taking up the same space, they seem or feel like they're not until you put the outside boxes and the grid work on them. So I just wanted to point out for you that some of this is about what you presented, but some of it is about trying to be consistent with what it is that we have been saying about these AGF boxes. And this is going entirely in the opposite direction of what we have been uh, insisting upon as these designs come forward. So putting it on the back would just simply now further block the view of looking around this because now I see all the stuff behind it and it never occurred to me when you showed it to me from the front that there was a bunch of stuff on the back of it. And so it not only is, is it taking up more sidewalk as Commissioner Ho has so aptly put it, but it also now took up what the view looks like from behind it. Yes, and to answer your question, it is taking 
more space. It is. Okay, so on that note, for the replacement pedestals, I guess we take it both for conceptual and final as an as a no, right? Correct. Is that how I word it, city attorney? Would you or like do, a, would you like a vote? Yeah, we would like a vote. Um, Commissioner Scrafano, is it okay to table this or continue this to the next meeting so the applicant has a chance to um, make some changes? Oh, absolutely. I guess that's, but if we do an official vote, doesn't that do that? Or I guess I'm ask, asking a procedural question. Sure. I think, I think it's probably better for you to table it until the next meeting um, rather than uh, taking the vote and denying it. Okay. Got it. All right. So then Sorry, I'm going to just push back one, one more on that. Why is it better? What's the repercussion of, of doing it that way, Daniel? So I have full knowledge when I, yeah, on sure. which way. Sure. I think my, my understanding is um, from the commission standpoint, you're giving the applicant an opportunity to take into consideration the input that you've given and be able to present it again without having it be denied. Um, as I, so this is how, as I understand it, it's been, it's been done. Um, so that would be how I would recommend to do it. And, and I'll ask our city attorney uh, to weigh in as well if he has any input. Yeah, I, think my I, 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 don't, I don't understand that either. I mean, in this case, we really are rejecting this design. So that would mean that, that doesn't mean they can't come back to us about this location, it means they have to come back with a different design. It, and theoretically, if that's if that's the case, then we can't deny anything. We would just table it until they get it right. Uh, I'm not just curious. Um, not necessarily, but you've okay. provided a significant amount of input um, to this applicant um, to give them an opportunity to come back. Yes, because uh, the one thing we'd like to check in with our RF is those radios on the ground, uh, the ones that are that are basically on the H frame. If there's a way we can remove these from being a ground thing, if we just go with the two cabinets, is that something that would potentially be approved? And that's so that they can let the RF team know that, hey, the, the main issue is probably not the cabinets, but the radials that are on the H frames in the back and on the side. So if they have another way to be able to still get the technology without installing them on the ground, I can get confirmation on them if, uh, if there's any way we can either remove them, make them smaller, or be able to um, install them somewhere else, right, but not on the ground, um, that I can check with them if that's maybe an option. But my, my question is, if we if we went with just the candidates themselves, is there a, is there a, a likelihood that we possibly could, ha could have this approved? Peter, if I'm understanding your question correctly, are you asking to have the cabinets approved and remove the equipment in the back? Right. And the side. Yeah. I heard my fellow commissioners um, state two concerns. One is having now two of these boxes instead of one. And the other was the additional, if there is additional space. So unless the proposal is addressing those two things, then to Commissioner Jefferson's point, we would be rejecting this design. So I just wanna clarify that those are, that's the feedback we are, are giving in, a, in addition to the this, Ex ex uh, additional external H frame thing. Is that correct? And, and Nicole, can you go to the front view again? And just so you know, uh, team, um, in regards to the, the cabinet on the left and the two cabinets on the right, the two cabinets on the right are equal in terms of the actual footprint. The only reason we're showing a gap right now between them 
And if we were basically put these two cabinets together, basically hitting each other, they would fit perfectly right on top of the one that's on the left, right? The same blueprint. We're only having a gap there just so that the tech can open the doors uh, easier so they can stick their hand in. That's the reason we're showing a gap in between. My question is, if we, if we find a way to just go ahead and can totally put them together with no gap, and it, it's going to fall within the exact same footprint because that's the way these cabinets work, where they're very similar, created by the uh, similar makers. If we were to do that and remove the radials, is that now something that be considered a different? What would be considered different by by your team? I don't want to be misunderstood. I actually like the design of the two narrower cabinets. Okay. I recognize that it is slightly taller than the other cabinet but the narrowness in the space makes it feel a little more aired. It's all the other stuff that you have attached outside of the two boxes that's the problem. So I know that if you had just come without all those other attachments, I would be sitting here approving two cabinets in the place of one that are slightly taller than the existing one but have the appearance of actually taking up less space because there's air around them. Thank it's you. all that other stuff you put on it on the side and in the back, which from this picture do not, when it's, when it's as it is right here until you blow it up, are not, is not as visible and that is, a, that is the problem. So I, I don't know how to tell you to go back and tell them what we would approve I know I can tell you what to tell them we're not approving. Gotcha. Um, sorry, I, I have a clarification question for what you just said. So the way it's represented in this picture right now, is that gap like going to, if we were, if it were approved, is that the gap that we're expected to see? Or I'm just not understanding the visual, why you would represent, so first, can you confirm if that's the actual gap? You said that the only reason why you're showing the gap is to let us know that there is room in there so people can, the the, the technicians can open the door, but I'm the, not understanding what you mean by that. The intention would be to install it like this with the gap, right? That would as be, is. As is, that would be the intention. Now keep in mind, if we do it this way, we would be increasing the footprint by approximately three three inches, right? By by adding that gap. The reason we're adding that gap is to make it easier for the techs to open the doors. Now, if we were to completely remove the gap and put them to come, you know, totally right up against each other, it would perfectly be the same size as the one on the left. So there would be zero increase. So wait a minute. You're saying that it's actually forget the Forget the grid on the outside. The two boxes are taking up a wider footprint than the existing one. By, by approximately two inches. Because but, of the gap between them. Correct. Now we base can, under those, correct? Exactly. So now, it's not sitting on the same footprint. No, right here, no, right here, it would have to be a, a, a increased and uh, again. By approximately two inches, the, the, the footprint. Now, this conversation started with you saying it takes up the same footprint. Same. Yeah. Yeah. That's the exactly. way this started. And, and, and as importantly, if, if the technician needs that space, I don't want to ever jeopardize their safety. So <sighs> closing, okay. I mean, how would they have space if you, how would they have space to like, if you put them all, put it close together, wouldn't that jeopardize their safety No, and or their ability to do their jobs? Uh, the reason being is because there's, there's two ways to do this for, for the, for the, the, the text. If, if they prefer the gap, right? If they don't have a gap, because we've been able to propose that at times, what they do is they put the hinges in a certain way so that they can just go ahead and remove the doors. Oh, they open up in a different way. So they, they have ways to do so. They just asking if you guys can get the gap for us, great. If you can't, we can still work around it because we have a way to work work with it safely. So my question is if, if it's possible to table this 
and remove the radials in the back if that's the main issue. And if the cabinets are okay, based on the design right here, I, I wanna be able to see if I can go back to our RF team and let them know that the cabinets are gonna possibly be something that might be approved. They're gonna say will be, but possibly might be approved. However, the radials on the side or in the back are something that is most likely not gonna happen. And, they, and, and are the, the city of LA team is not happy with those radials being there. So I can let them know if they can go ahead and do without those. Yeah, but I think the, the the additional problem is now you're saying, I mean, that you don't need that gap in between. And that's, we're assuming that the gap in between, I would prefer no gap. And it okay. just looks. The preference is a like gap. One box, it's a little taller and it sits on the same footprint, but. Yeah. And, and we can do that. It was a preference of, of the FOPS text. If we can, we can have the gap approved. That would be great. That's what they requested. If we can't get that gap approved, they're okay with that as well. I don't know. How does everybody else feel about the gap? It seems like. Well, that, but 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 that means that now what we want to see is the box in solid form with no gap, no grid, no wires, and and yeah. and the understanding of the height specifications. We went from its same footprint to know it's two inches bigger. To me now thinking to myself, now nah, that looks like more than two inches out. Now that I really stare at it, how much taller is it, et cetera, et cetera. So at this point, you've gotten our feedback. You understand some of the concerns. You guys can come back in here and present us with two options. All right. Okay. And I think I, I make a move to say that we just deny this and table it and you guys come back. Okay. I, that's the other question I have, uh, just to clarify, before I, I want to understand the repercussion of denying it altogether or tabling it. I'm not in good conscience able to, to vote for a table, but I also don't understand, like I need, a, I need some kind of counsel on what would denying it totally do to this project versus tabling it. I get tabling it allows them another month or so to, to go back, but that does, it doesn't seem like denying it would prevent them from doing the same thing. But I could be wrong. I just need some counsel on, and guidance on that. Sure, I, Commissioner. Um, they, you, can, you can absolutely, you and the commission, it's ultimately the commission's prerogative as to whether or not you want to table or deny it. If you deny it, they will have the opportunity to come back making all the changes that you've, you've requested as well. It, it's just more of a right. procedural piece. So, so okay. however you as a commission want to do that, that's ultimately up to you all. Council, can I ask a question? Does denying trigger something different than tabling? <laughs> Would no, they no, have my, to go back to the the start of the application process? Is is a question I have. Mike Dunn, the City News Office. So this, they're they're still at the start of the application process. In essence, they, in order to actually submit a completed application, they need to have the approval to the of the design by this commission. And only after that and a number of other items do, can they actually present what the city considers a completed application. So gotcha. we're still at the beginning. Okay. Right, but if we if we say no, then they have to start all over again, paying another fee. Um, an application fee to the commission. Yeah, that would be, it would be a new application. Well, it's not, it's a, it's a, it's a new seeking of a new approval for the, from this commission, but the application itself to the, to, to public works would not be re-triggered. Re yeah, I think, um, just thank you for that clarification. The, uh, the idea is for us to be able to work and make sure that the business of the city continues and every business does that. But I just think this presentation um, just did not, was not transparent in terms of what was being presented. And that's that's the problem for me. And the commission seems like, I mean, we we provided feedback. So um, yeah, that I, I don't want to ever stop any business from continuing, but it just seems there's a lot of concerns that we've had with the presentation. And another last question. <laughs> If, if where, fine, do those, where do those radios go? Where are they going to go? 
if they're not on the back of the structure. This is where I will get with with RF to see if what technologies they can maybe move forward without. If if what they're getting out of the cabinets will be enough or not. That's where it's going to be a give and take with RF. Like, hey, I know okay. you're getting your cabinets. But I know you want to go further with your radio, but the radios aren't going to look, you know, pleasing to, to the city of LA team where you're going to have to probably remove them or come up with something else. Commissioner, and, Commissioner Hall. Yeah, I, I, I would. I'm. I'm willing to accept the idea that we uh, table this because there are more questions and they need to come back with answers, so that the entire process of starting this application does not start over again because we denied the application, and since no one can give a 100% clarity on that issue. It seems to me if we deny, they start all over again. If we table and say, you've heard all the concerns that we have and you understand what we would probably be saying no to, you can go back and look and see what can or cannot be fixed with this application. I'm willing to table and let them come back with whatever they think meets this. And at that point, I'd be comfortable. I, I would say, okay, then, Yes or no, um, just so that they don't have to start over. Okay, are the fellow commissioners in agreement with that? Commissioner Holland, Commissioner Yeah, I, I can accept that. I think the intention here is that it's not the this group um, that we're really looking out for. It's really, I just can't see those folks in those apartment buildings looking out looking at that stuff. So it's it's beyond just this commission. It's what we've been chosen to do is to see if, you know, the kid down the street or the mom down the street, just look at this and we have to question the intention um, thinking on their, yeah, just with, with the public in mind as well. So it's not about this commission. And again, it we want to move business forward in the city. So I think that is a good compromise, um, Commissioner. Uh, one more consideration. Can you go back to the one that shows us the back side, please? I, I want you to imagine the gardener. Mm. Whose job it is to whack the grasses and keep them neat. Trying to get around the back of your box with all that grid stuff. Right. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Can so we I also just just for clarity, can we also get um, the dimensions and specifications of those key areas, the, the total, uh, you know, the total of the structure that you bring uh, before us next time, as well as any gap, um, the the you know measurements of any gaps, it's just so that we can be very clear. And you're showing us and not telling us, and we can see what those measurements are. Thank you. Absolutely. I think that's a good comment, Commissioner Gerardo. Okay, so I'm going to say that we are tabling this item, replacement of pedestals LA02306A, um, until a future meeting. Is that agreed by all commissioners? Do you want to say yes? So, so moved to Thank table. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, Commissioner Ho, you're Thank in agreement. You. And oh, Commissioner yeah. Gerardo. And so am I. Okay, so we'll move on now to the next item. Thank you, uh, previous applicant, but we're moving on now to street lighting submission. And um, all these items moving forward are matching street lights. So we have item A, item B, item C, D, and E. So Tammy, can you present this to us? Sure. And I think we can take these all on consent, correct? Yes. Let me uh, let me know when you guys can see my screen. So this is the first one. Uh, all of them are matching street lights. So this is uh, what it looks like. This digital cone shows uh, where it's going to be, and this is the <clears throat> street light type. It's CD eight fifty one A. Same here. This is showing that it matches the rest of the street lights down the street. The second one is 
again, a matching street light. So this is the proposed location and this is the street light example. And here it is matching down the street. So same thing here, this is a digital cone to show where the street light is going to be located. This is uh, an example of the street light and it will be located here. And here, this will be located here. And to show that uh, this is what it's matching. So they're all matching. These are all, new, these are all new street lights. Mm -hmm. They're all new street lights. And it doesn't look uh, like uh, any of them. And can I just ask you one question? It's only because of, of what was given to us. Um, one of them says it's an 851B and another one says it's an 851A. Is that just the, uh, is it something I don't understand or? Which one are we talking about? So the pictures in the packet that you gave us say 851, 951, and 953. The oh, you mean on the agenda? Right. Uh huh. Each of the applications has A is an 851A, B is a 851B, C is a 951A, D is an 851A, and E is a 953C. So I'm just assuming there's some variation on a theme that has nothing to do with it saying attachment A. Right. So um, CD um, 851A or 851 is the way it looks. So an A, B, and C will all look the same. The difference is the height of the actual street light, if they have arms, like if there's a, uh, a piece that comes out in the middle, it could also be the length of that arm. But in an 851 example, it would be the height of the street. So it's determined by like the width of the street, how high the actual light needs to be and how tall the street light pole needs to be. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions or comments, Commissioner Gerardo? None, thanks. Commissioner Ho? None, thank, thank you. Thank you. I, I don't have any comments either. So is there a motion to approve the matching streetlights A, B, C, D, and E? New streetlights. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. Uh, Commissioner Guiardo, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Yes. Commissioner Ho. Yes. And I also vote yes. So these streetlights have been approved. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Okay, so now that brings us to the general manager report. So Daniel, I'm sure you have some updates for us. I do, I do. Thank you, everybody. And I want to say thank you to all of you um, for the really thoughtful conversations we've had today. I think they've been really good and helpful um, as we think about how we look at things going forward. Um, and I want to also say thank you to our staff for their ongoing work to support our commission. Um, first, I want to just wish everybody a happy new year. We're really excited to kick off the new year with the mayor and our citywide elected officials. Um, and our new and current council members. We're continuing to have good conversations with the mayor's office and are looking forward to meeting with our new council members. Um, as we move what feels like very quickly into the new year, a lot of a lot, we have a lot of great opportunities coming forward at our centers and theaters and historic sites and throughout the city. So we're kicking off classes at our art centers and tours are beginning again and programming at our art centers. And we're also celebrating the Lunar New Year this year at several different locations throughout the city over the next three weekends. We're really excited for this pilot program and I'll share the full listing of events with all of you um, and they can also be found on our website. Um, we're also moving forward with the COVID-19 Memorial in partnership with the Sea Change Institute to host community stakeholder sessions in each council's district 
from February through April this year to determine if the city should create a permanent COVID-19 memorial and garner community feedback um, on what the city will look at doing. Um, we're also moving forward and continuing moving forward on the 1871 Chinese Massacre Memorial um, as we look ahead over the next coming weeks to receive our preliminary proposals um, and then we'll present those to the larger community. So additionally, we've begun our grant panel sessions and will continue over the next eight weeks. Um, and our teams are continuing to work really hard. So wanted to just thank you all for the ongoing support and looking forward to our partnership as we keep going forward. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Daniel. Um, are there any other commission announcements? And I just to give a shout out and thank you to cultural affairs, which is doing the work now to kick off what will be uh, what's referred to as African American heritage, but actually is Black History Month. Um, with the opening ceremonies around the third of February will be virtual, and the cultural affairs always does the book each year, and they are been hard at work at that, including over the holidays. So appreciation to. Um, to the agency for doing that. It happens for all of the various affinity groups throughout the year. And we come out of January and Black History Month and everybody's already in it before someone goes, oh, guess what we did? So I wanna thank them in advance before we hit that month for the work that they're doing. Particularly, I know that this is uh, this sits in the hands of Will uh, E. Caperton, so thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I was gonna mention it, but I was gonna share it in February, so I'm happy. Uh... Happy that you brought it up and our team has been working hard at putting together the guide um, as we look forward to seeing it um, by February 3rd. So thank you. I, I, and I will, I will let the record reflect that it was um, our author study club, which was the found, which is the Los Angeles chapter of the association for the study of African-American um, life and history uh, that started Black History Month in Los Angeles and then eventually led over the years to the affinity months for all of the other uh, groups and organizations. So um, we probably in 2024, will go back to referring to it as Black History Month because heritage and history are not exactly the same thing, but um, and in honor of Carter G. Woodson who founded it, but we are so grateful uh, that this always happens and that we get to kick it off and particularly the cultural affairs um, does this work. So I just wanted to stop and say that to you because it has been spoken of often by a lot of the members and they remain so eternally grateful and we don't get to say that enough in public. Thank you, I'll definitely share it with, with Will and our team. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Right, and keep us posted on all of the events too. So whether they're virtual, Absolutely. great to attend. Great. Other than that, our next commission meeting, you guys, is February 8th. Um, the commission meeting submission dates for architectural public arts and street lights is January 18th. And on that note, we could adjourn the meeting. Yay. Is that okay? Yay. Wow. So, good to see you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye.